Good morning. Thank you for joining us on this YouTube edition of Sabbath School Today. Lesson number five, from pride to humility. Oh dear Lord, teach us that lesson. We're all so filled with hubris that we need the humility of Jesus. And give us some good news today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There was once a man who was very proud and haughty and arrogant and even cruel, a king whose name was Nebuchadnezzar, and Iraq was his kingdom. And like most kings of his day, he could have lived and died in hopeless, proud self-deception, except that a man of God prayed for him personally. It was Daniel the prophet. Daniel discerned in the king a streak of honesty, and reality in his makeup. He did what the Apostle John said we should do. Quote, if anyone sees his brother sinning, a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and God will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. The king's dream of Daniel 4 was God's answer to the prophet's prayer. The Lord permitted Daniel to be an evangelist to teach Nebuchadnezzar gospel truths. The Lord loved the king so much that he gave him a special blessing. He humbled the man in the dust, gave him a form of insanity in which he thought he was an animal or a cow called lycanthropy or bovanthropy. And in seven years of gross humiliation, the proud king learned a proper heart attitude of reverence for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You could hardly say that the king humbled himself. It was God who humbled him, even humiliated him. We all too have problems with pride and arrogance. God has given us each wonderful gifts that we can easily become proud over. But let's not but let's not you and I be so stubborn that we wait for the Lord to humble us like the King Nebuchadnezzar. To be humiliated uh, is a very severe ministry of the Lord. It's too late in the day now for the Lord to resort to those extreme measures to heal us. For we are living in the great cosmic day of atonement. Now we want to humble ourselves. Self-starters were a wonderful invention for bulky Model T's, let's find a self-starter for humbling self and not wait for the Lord to have to do it for us, as with Nebuchadnezzar. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all of my pride. That is better. That's self-humbling. Is the story of Daniel 4 of King Nebuchadnezzar's mental illness true? Or is it pious fiction? Well, there are many details that mark it as authentic history. There was another powerful king changing his religion. In Egypt, his name was Amen Amenhotep IV. The literary formula of Nebuchadnezzar's decree is proper also for the 6th century BC. And there are actual stone inscriptions from Nebuchadnezzar that confirm Daniel's details. The insanity of lycanthropy, thinking one is an animal, is verified historically and even today. There are examples of inordinate human pride leading to mental instability. Those who walk in pride, God is able to abase. Daniel 4.37 the higher one goes the more dismal is his fall when unconscious inner guilt torments. In his proud building accomplishments, the Babylonian king had oppressed myriads of laboring people, and he couldn't help realizing it. Daniel urged him, break off your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Daniel 4 verse 27. Proud tyrants do have a conscience. Unresolved guilt not only makes the, the weakest organ of one's body break down, just consider the dreaded skin disease that came upon Simon the Pharisee, who knew that he had ruined a woman's life in Mark 14.3, 1747 of Luke. 
and guilt can also poison the mind. But the Daniel 4 story also contains gospel truth that marks it as inspired. The disciplinary punishment God sent to Nebuchadnezzar was mixed with divine compassion. For the great tree that was felled was left to sprout again, Daniel 4.26. The humiliated king was mercifully restored as an encouragement to us that God can heal our mental disorders. His mental disease left him with a measure of reality that finally, after seven years of a slow healing process, enabled him to lift up his eyes to heaven and click on the understanding button. Daniel 4, verse 34. Mentality returned to Nebuchadnezzar. He could, couldn't, could get his mind off the grass below and now see the stars above. And when our vision is fixed on worldly fun and prosperity, we are foolish and ignorant, like a beast before you, says Psalm 73:22. And yet still, we are held by God's right hand, Daniel 4:23. The same Savior who was kind to King Nebuchadnezzar is the same one who is kind to us. Oh Lord, thank you for this enlightening lesson from Daniel in Nebuchadnezzar's experience that we too could be mentally deranged like him so easily, but God gives us a right mind. In Jesus' name, amen.